my. For me, it's all about the journey, and cross-country outings are all special. My good friend Craig is in the midst of his flight training and has paid his dues with planning cross countries on paper. So it's time for him to learn modern cross country planning, maybe even from these even older dudes. I'm motivating Craig to plan his first big post PPL cross country, maybe to Santa Fe. Here's the flow of the process, as well as this short video and companion document. Welcome aboard. We'll begin by entering the airports of our departure and day's destination. And no surprise, for a Cessna 172, we need a fuel stop. Maybe about 60% of the way. And hey, hey cool, how about Sedona? Okay, I've been to this gorgeous place before, but if we hadn't, for fuel stop, what are we looking for? We go to the airport full screen view for all the details. First and foremost, we check fuel availability and price. An Avgas fuel truck will work nicely as during refueling we hope to grab lunch. Consistent with my experience this FBO gets very good reviews and were we to need it there's also a maintenance shop on the field. Check, check. And now for food. Bingo! We're having lunch on the patio at the Rampside Mesa Grill. With field elevation at 4,800 feet, let's make sure the runway works for us. We'll check landing and takeoff distances in a moment, but first, how busy is this airport? Personally, if I can, I try to avoid super busy training fields. One gauge of this might be to display traffic in the air at this very moment. Reasonable at Sedona, but a bit crazy around Embry-Riddle. What does the Sedona airport admin want us to know about flying into Sedona? And what do pilots have to say about their experience? Okay, Sedona works for our lunchtime field stop. Let's plan our route for this first leg. We'll start with a quick initial check of terrain and airspace and get a good overall picture from the profile view. A cruise altitude of 9,500 looks good, and we'll need to skirt a handful of restricted areas in the Mojave. My standard operating procedure is to plan a route that, if needed, would work for IFR as well as VFR. This routing, for example, is only two minutes longer than straight line and provides good clearance for both terrain and airspace. I'm also a fan of another IFR, as whenever possible, I prefer to follow roads. And through this barren stretch of desert, we might as well stay within glide range of this long runway called Interstate 40. Let's convert this route into a full-fledged flight, including defining a backup to Sedona, this one with lots of aviation infrastructure certainly available at Prescott.
we set flight rules to VFR and do our fuel planning. It'll be just the two of us and some light baggage on board. We carefully review the complete fuel and weight calculations. We could carry full fuel, but ForeFlight nicely calculates for us minimum fuel required, including alternate and reserve. With crew, cargo, and fuel, what's our landing distance? Taking into account runway conditions and forecast weather. With 5,000 feet of Sedona aircraft carrier available, all looks good. With our seat belts buckled, let's chair fly this first leg in 3D. We can jumpstart our second flight, continuing to Santa Fe. And select Albuquerque as alternate. And as we did for leg one, select an IFR compatible route. We send this route to the map, and again, check terrain and airspace. Looks like 11.5 works for crews, and we'll want to extend the upwind departure to allow us to clear the high plateau just east of Sedona. With expected high density altitude, we'll want to assure adequate takeoff performance and, of course, lean for peak power. As with our landing calculations, ForeFlight also automates the weight and weather dependent calculations for ground rule and obstacle clearance. Join me on board as we pre-fly this second leg to our weekend getaway in Santa Fe. We preview the airport environment, both as it might look in daylight or after dark. As our departure date nears, we diligently track the evolving weather picture and triple check all of our plans. Among a variety of sources, I tend to rely on Windy for mid-range weather and for flight itself for short-term and in flight. The traditional nav log is available with just a tap. And of course, we're getting a full briefing at least the day before and the morning of our trip. I think it's time to fly. If 
you enjoyed this video, please smash the thumbs up, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. Thanks for flying with us.